Let's go. All right, so daily announcement to schedule your exam. Uh, once again, the culprits are not here, so. <clears throat> And I know they're not watching the recordings. <sighs> yes, I, I can see how many views I have. Okay, uh, so we are doing use substitution. Um, I said I did a couple examples, so I'll do a couple more. Um, really, the only way to learn is just to do it yourself. Um, it's just It really is a lot like watching cooking videos and pretending like that taught you anything. Okay, right. so um, so look at this integral. Looks a lot like the one yesterday. <clears throat> Hopefully, we'll struggle less. So uh, okay, it's two minutes past the hour, so I'm gonna for this one time, not ask you what substitution should I make. Um, or maybe I'll decide, <laughs> which is, it could be even worse. Um, so you can make U equals, um, X minus one. That would definitely work. Um, but how about we make um, u equals no. Yeah, make uh, u equals x minus one. Okay, so if you make u equals x, x minus one, uh, well then. Um, du is the derivative of this dx. The derivative of x minus one is just one. So this is gonna become just du. This is gonna become u. What is this x gonna become? Well, um, the way you do this is to solve for x. In the in the only equation I have, I mean the one with the du and the dx is um, oof, no one doesn't really mean anything to solve for x there. But if I solve for x here, well, how do I solve for x? Um, I'm pretty sure I add one to both sides, so I get u equals x plus one. So, um, what, what am I saying? U plus one equals X. <clears throat> okay, so well, uh, this means that the X here that I didn't know what to do with should become U plus one. So, um, well, what I just said, x should become um, u plus one. So, um,
what to do with the limits now. Um, so I want to change the limits um, so that I don't have to substitute back. Because one way to do this would be to just solve this integral and then plug back in x minus one for u and then finish the problem. But if I don't want to do that, I could just I could just um, look at this equation. So. Um, What is what is u is if x is one, if x is two. Yeah. One, because it's it's x minus one. And if um x is one u is going to be one minus one which is zero uh so this is going to be the integral from zero to one of u plus one root u du thank you Sydney and pascal um okay so did this get easier Or did I do this all for nothing? I think I got easier. What can I do? What What can I do now? Substitute for you. Do you mean substitute one and zero? Oh, that doesn't work. Um, I need to take the antiderivative first. So to find the integral, so I need to find a function whose derivative right down. Whose derivative is u plus one root u, and then plug in um, plugging one and zero into what I get. Um, if you, I, I can't plug one and zero into into this. That's just that's going to be a different computation. Um, that's like if I ask you to take a derivative. If I ask you to find the derivative at, at three and you just plug in three, you, you haven't taken the derivative. So this symbol is doing something. Um, so we turn the problem into this problem. Um, <clears throat> the question is, um, what function has derivative u plus one root u?
All right, so we have no clue um, how to do a problem. Um, oh, shit. Uh, okay. That, uh, well, we're going to find out. Do the three halves. Okay, well, I'm gonna ignore the C for our own sake uh, because if I got if I get one answer, all the other ones are just found adding one C. Um, let's see. Um, there's. I mean, if you guess and you guess correctly, then you don't need to do anything else. So I want to see if if it's here. So I'm going to take the derivative and see what I get. If I get u plus 1 root u, then I, then I won. And if, well, Sydney won. If I, if I don't get that, then we didn't lose yet because we haven't given up. Um, so what is the derivative? What is the derivative of this function? How do I find the derivative of this function? <clears throat> First, don't you take the product rule, not the product rule, power rule of u squared over 2. So that would be 2u over 2, and the 2 is canceled, so it would just be u. And the derivative of u is 1. Mm -hmm. And then 2 thirds times 3, th 3 halves is 1 times, and then 3 halves minus 1 is 1 half. Okay, um, you said you said product rule, and that's not the product rule. I didn't mean product rule. I meant power rule. No, I wish you had meant product rule because this is. I mean, this is a product. Um. So you you have to use the product rule. Um. So. So. Um, this is, so you did both derivatives. Um, the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Um, so Sydney told me the, um, the answer to both. 2u divided by 2 plus 1. So the power rule, um, u squared becomes 2u, u to the 1 becomes just 1. This part I'm not taking the derivative of. And now I don't take the derivative of the first thing. Um, and, um, and now the power, using the power rule here, you subtract three halves minus one, which is one half. Okay, um, two's cancel here and here and here. And if I just um, go multiply this out, I get two thirds u to the five halves plus two thirds u to the three halves. Um, u two to the so five halves again divided by two plus u to the three halves. Oh, I can combine a lot of these. So um, 
two thirds plus one half. Uh, two thirds plus one half is four sixths plus three three sixths, and I can't for the life of me say six. Um, anyway, seven divided by six, uh, use the five halves. Um, and two thirds plus one is five thirds, you do the three halves. Okay, um, so. Do we get do we get the function we wanted to get? Um, well, they could be simplified differently, but but we, no, we didn't. Um, so this this wasn't the answer. Um, How can I see that these are not the same? Well, I can write root of u as u to the one half, and this is u to the three halves plus u to the one half. And now these don't look the same. Okay, so what happened here, um, well, what happened here is we guessed and we got it wrong and nobody can blame us for it. But um, the reason, this the, doesn't work is that when you write if you if you write a product to take a derivative you need to use the product rule you need to use it it's not a this is not a choice you just the only way to do it correctly is using the product rule um so since you're not going to get the derivative of this times the derivative of that you're not gonna this is not gonna be the thing that comes out so if you if you have the integral of the antiderivative of two things multiplying, it's not going to work to just take the antiderivative of one and the other. Um, that's just how it is. Any questions? No problem. So keep this in mind if you take log two and all you do for two months is taking integrals. Um that is just never going to work. Okay. Um But still, I mean, if you have a candidate for an answer to an integral, really the way you see if you did it correctly is to take the derivative and see if you got the answer. This is such a, this is the most valuable lesson. Just take the derivative and see if you get the original function. All right. Back to the drawing board. Um, Do we distribute the square root of u? Well, that's a good idea. We can definitely do that. So now I have, I, I mean, I'm just having, I have the same function um, written in a different way. So is this way of writing it um, better for me guessing an antiderivative? I could still rewrite this in a different way. It's like when you write, when you do derivatives, it's nice to have roots written as powers. 
we can do the same here. Um, so then this is u to the three halves plus u to the one half. And at this point, um, at this point, Sydney has the answer. Um, does anyone else have the answer? What function? Has the derivative u to the three halves plus u to the one half. Um, what function has derivative um, u to the one half? Well, it's a power. Um, if I use the power rule to find a derivative, I get a power as well as the answer. There we go. Thank you, Sydney. So the answer um, is you add one to the exponent and you divide by the by what you're gonna have to multiply later. The derivative of u to the three halves is u to the three halves minus one times three halves, which is u to the one half. And to take the integral of u to the three halves, we take one more in the exponent and divide by that, because that is exactly what you need to divide to by to take the to get the correct derivative. So um, what we have is we found the antiderivative, which is the sum of these two. And now we're supposed to plug in zero and one. <clears throat> uh, let's, um, I don't like having fractions in the denominator. I don't like fractions inside of fractions. So I'm just gonna write it like that. Put that two up in the numerator. Any questions? All right. Um, so um, now we have to plug in because we already found the antiderivative, right? The point where we find the antiderivative is when I stop writing the symbol, which means 
you, you still have to find the antiderivative. Um, now I don't write it anymore because I already, I just wrote it here. Um, so, uh, well, when u is one, all the powers become one. When u is zero, all the powers become zero. So the answer is two fifths by plus two thirds. So 0.4 plus uh, 0.666. All right, so that's supposed to be um, that's supposed to be the area. Any questions? Let's graph it. See, um, see if we if I'm wrong or not. G was the area between one and two. So, um, so um, this area, I think um, it looks like it could be 1.4 to me. Um, So, this is the, the function, the graph. And this area is the integral between one and two. So, I see the function is positive. So, the area um, is um, the area is uh, the integral, they have the same sign. And well, um, if I had to guess what this looks like, it looks like it's, it looks like almost a triangle. So the area of the triangle is the base times the height divided by two. The base is one, the height is two, and two is two. So this area is one, so this is more or less one. And it got 1.0666, so pretty happy. Uh, I'm pretty sure, I mean, I think the odds of making a mistake and still getting something that close are pretty slim, so. Good job. Any questions? All right. All right, let's do one more. <clears throat> let's do the integral. Of sine of root x divided by root x. Okay. So, um, I can't guess a function that has this derivative that has derivative sine of root x divided by root x. So, um, I guess we're gonna have to you do a u substitution and hope for the best. So um what should I try here? I'm trying to make you.
Thanks for the one half. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I think that's a good guess. I would make the sign easier. And the derivative also looks very promising. Because the derivative of x to the one half is one half x to the negative one half. So du is one half x to the negative one half dx. And maybe I can just um, I mean anyway you anyway you do this. Uh, you can, for example, you can think of dx as being as multiplying, and then divide out by everything. So dx would be one divided by one half x to the negative one half times du. And well, two in the denominator is a one in the numerator, and uh, Uh, negative power in the denominator is the same as a positive power in the numerator. Right? Um, one divided by a to the negative b is a to the b. So, um, let's see what the, what the bounds are. Um, later. So uh, well, root of x is u, and I guess this should be u as well. And now dx um, is 2 times x to the 1 half du. I right, computed this down here. Okay, so there's still x's here. Um, so I need to do something with that x to the one half. Luckily, um, u is x to the one half. So I can just write that as a, as a u. And now there's no excess anymore. And even better, uh, these u's cancel. So really, I might have noticed, or Matthew might have noticed at the beginning, that a root of x in the denominator, that's already the derivative of root of x. Uh, so well, this was almost equal to the u already, which was a sign that life was going to be good. Um, so that's the integral of 2 sine of u. Um, So what function has derivative um, has derivative to sine of u? Negative two cosine u. Yeah. Um, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So you multiply that with negative two, you get uh, the positive two that you want. 
so I need to plug in zero and one for X. Uh, not for you. So I need to plug it back in the axis. Um, or I could have changed the bounds, but didn't feel like it. So I need to substitute root of x uh, for u. And now I'm going to read them. Um, so now that I already found the antiderivative, um, where did your two go? Oh, um, that's a great question. <laughs> Sorry. My two should definitely be there. That is, I think, the number one thing I messed up when I drew integrals. I forget constants and negative signs that are out front. So negative two. Um, so plug in, plug in one and plug in zero. And be very careful that you have to subtract them. But there's, all, there's already a, a negative sign there. So you try to do this in your head. I think, I think counting minus signs in your head is always a bad idea. So this is negative two cosine of one plus two cosine of zero. Um, the cosine of one is just some number. Uh, the cosine of zero is one. So that's the answer. Um, two minus two cosine of one. Are there any questions? Let's grab this. Uh, so two minus two cosine of one is point nine. Um, and the function was sine of root x divided by x. Um, oh my God. So I guess this function, this function was continuous. Um, oof. I don't know if that if this I, I think I might have we might have computed a thing that makes not a lot of sense. I forgot we can't really get to zero here. Anyway, um, I guess we did do it. I guess it did work. Um, so this is the function. Uh, this is the area underneath it between zero and one that we wanted to compute. And we got 0.91 and that looks, I mean, the that looks just about right because this square has area one. Could this be 92% of the square? I, I believe that. Um, so, Green news. Okay, any questions? Um, okay, uh, so that's the end of the chapter. Um, and this is, um, so I'm going to make the exam up to chapter five. So up to here. Um, 
then I'm gonna keep going. Uh, I'm gonna keep talking, of course. I'm not gonna waste your time for the half week you have left. Um, so what's left is applications of integrals. So computing areas and volumes. And the thing is, um, most of doing that is also doing integrals. So it's not like it's not a good practice for chapter five anyway. Um, I'm just not gonna give you a question. You know, you're gonna get integrals in the exam. Um, just not finding a volume. But, you know, I want you to know uh, this stuff that is on the syllabus. So, um, So applications of integrals, chapter six. Areas, volumes, um, I don't think I get to cover all of them. And then there's a couple more in chapter eight that I'm not going to get to. Um, anyway, so how do how to use integrals to find areas? Well, um, you know, one way, um, an integral tells you the area under a graph over the x axis. So if you have two points, um, this area is exactly the integral. But of course, not all the shapes in the world uh, look like this. They look like a horizontal line two vertical lines and then a curve. Uh, shapes look like anything. Um, or even um, remember if the if the function is under If the function is under the the axis, then the area is negative the integral. Um, because the integral is negative, well the integral is negative the area. So you put one more minus sign, you get a positive number. So, um, so what about the area of a shape like this? This is not the area under a graph. I'm pretty sure because there's no straight line in the bottom or on the side. So, I guess the question is, can you do this with integrals or do we need to invent uh, more stuff? Uh, and the answer is that we can do this with integrals. So, um, So um, let me do an example. The area between, um, so it's going to be the area between a parabola, between two parabolas.
Um, Oi. Right. Um, so, so these two parabolas. This uh, chunk in there. So, um, how can we do this with an integral? Well, this area, so. This area is definitely not an integral. But so the thing is, so this is y equals g of x. This is y equals f of x. The thing is, if I draw this line, Um, then I sort of split the shape into into areas that are integrals. So um, the blue area is going to be the integral. Well, I don't know what this point is. Is the integral from zero to a of f of x because it's the area under the graph of the the first parabola. And if I take the red area, so I don't know what the red, red area is, but I know that if I take the red and the blue together, well, this is. Um, it's the area under the other curve. So um, if I know what the blue area is and I know what the red plus blue area is, um, I know what the red area is. The red is um, it's the same as red plus blue. And then you take away the extra. And I have a formula for red. I have a formula for blue. And this lets me write the um, write the area I want as a difference of two integrals, which is uh, good enough. I could even, since the integral of the sum is the sum of the integrals, I could even write it like this. All right. Uh, well, tomorrow I'll find this area. Any questions? So the key is to have coloring pencils um, or Crayolas. <clears throat>